Hey, Year 12. Thanks for coming along to the webinar. Going to be looking at June 2018, Paper 2 today. Oh, how exciting. Thanks for coming ah, Turn that off. Oh, there we go. Right, let's see who's going to be the first person in. I am realizing I'm starting this a little bit late today. One minute, one minute late. 60 seconds. Got two people on the two put people on it though already, which is great. And I'll run through the register. Hey, Sherlyn. Thanks for coming. Morning, Donna. Oh, afternoon even. After afternoon. <laughs> oh, hey, Mika. Hey, Mika. Hey, Emma. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming, guys. Okay, we've got Donna, got Mika, got Emma, got Sherlyn, it's great. Getting there, got Nikita, got Jasmine. Hi, both of you, it's nice to see you all. Got Jasmine, got Kayun, amazing. Got Nikita. Uh, got Kayun. There we go, we're doing really, really well. Uh, missing, missing all the boys, basically, along with Rhea. Oh, I'd, I'd wondered whether all the boys were going to be late then, and the girls were going to beat them, but Tenzi has beaten Rhea. Uh, I know that, uh, uh, there's Ivan. <laughs> uh, I realized that, I think Rhea had problems with her internet the last time. Could someone do me a favor and just message her for me, just to let me know whether or not she'll be attending? That would be great. We are missing Rhea, Dat, and Ben currently. But we're doing well. It's nice to see you all. I hope you all stay staying well. Yeah, staying locked inside, preventing as much of this, uh, you know, infection as possible. There's Dact. And we're trying to flatten the curve. T-shirt today. I, I, I know uh, if anybody's looking at it going, does that say physics? It, it does indeed say physics. Uh, but I was running out of science t-shirts, so I was going to turn to a physics one. Uh, <laughs> this one was a gift, by the way, from someone else. Clearly didn't know what subject I was going to That's uh, only two people missing now, I think. Just missing Ben and Rhea. I will start momentarily, folks. I'll, I'll, I'll get going in a minute. <laughs> right, I think I'll mark them as missing for now. Ben tends to be late and Rhea's having issues, I know. So I'll mark them as missing for now and then I can always fill that in later. Right, okay folks, so let's crack on with paper two. So of course I taught you guys paper two rather than paper one. Um, obviously, you know, they're gonna be, oh, what's up? Hey Ben, Ben made it, just Rhea now. Uh, if someone could let me know what's happening with Rhea, that would be... Ah, oh, and look, there she is. And there she is. And we're done. Whoop, whoop. Save. All done. Right. Guys, let's crack on with the... Let's crack on with paper two. Okay. So, um, I hope you guys have all been able to enter your data. Yeah. It's nice to see that, you know, lots of you have been trying to get that in now, which is really, really great. I might share with you my screen. Um, well, I might have a look and see if we can actually see how much of the document has been filled in. I'll do that close to the end. Okay, so here we are. So this is June, so this was done on May 25th. This is June 2018, paper two AS Chem. That's what that one is. Uh, it's an hour and 30 minutes, so I'll split the paper in half again. We'll see how we get on. Obviously, I'm extending each one of these webinars isn't really a good example of how you can do the paper in the allotted time. I'm trying my best to incorporate a bit of teaching in there as, as we go. So, okay. By the way, anybody who struggles with any of the, the, the language part of things, please do feel free to, you know, pause the video at any point and review it and obviously watch it back as many times as you like. Okay, so which of these species does not have a, does not have a trigonal pyramidal structure? Uh, and the answer is A. Everyone's going to go, how did you do that? Well, I know my examples, folks, and you guys always should as well. Aluminium trichloride is your example of trigonal planar. We can run every single, it's always worthwhile refreshing the process. So aluminium chloride, if we run our process, it's in group three, so it's bringing three electrons. We're going to add on three attachments. There is no overall charge, so no need to adapt. Six divided by two to put them into pairs. Three pairs of electrons aluminium, bond, 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 there you go. No lone pairs, this is trigonal planar, 120 degrees. When I, I suddenly realized what I shouldn't do is really erase this, 
Although on the flip side, I don't, and uh, I know that some of you have access to my notes actually, um, but not that it makes much of a difference. Ammonia. So we've got nitrogen in group five, three attachments. Yeah, ah, 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 ammonia. Let's actually do this properly. Three attachments. So add on three. No adjustment for charge. Eight divided by two to put it into pairs. Four pairs. Nitrogen. I'll put four pairs, and that's uh, immediately tetrahedral. Yeah, there we go. Uh, but what we realize is that this one is trigonal bipyramidal. We've got a lone pair at the top. There are three bonding pairs and then one lone. So trigonal bipyramidal. Then we get H2O2. Sorry, what am I doing? H3O plus, and then we've got, oh, um, let's actually do this. That's, this is a funny one, of course. So that's in group six, add on three attachments. There is a charge plus minus one for the charge. Remember, we are counting this process for those people who've never seen this process. What I'm actually doing here is I'm finding the central atom. Now, H3O plus is a tricky one because the central atom is usually first, but in this case, it's not. But this is the central atom and it has six electrons in its outer shell, add on three, electrons because each if we've got oxygen uh, for each bond that you make one it's going to be a dot and a cross so each bond this h is bringing one extra so you're adding that on to the central atom and then you're going to adjust the charge and a positive means you've lost an electron so what we're doing is we're counting the electrons in this yeah minus one which is going to give us eight divided by two now this is because valence valence shell electron pair repulsion theory vesper yeah, we're working in pairs here. So you divide by two to put them into pairs, and we get four. So we've got O with four bonds. There we go. But we've got three H's, and then, of course, that lone pair must go on top. There we go. Done. Trigonal bipyramidal. PCL5, oh, sorry, PCL3, that's an interesting one. It's going to be trigonal planar with lone pairs above and below. So we've got P is the central, which is in the same group as sulfur, so six plus three. Uh, oh, no, sorry, phosphorus is in the same group as nitrogen in five pcl3 add on three that's going to give us a total of eight divided by two gives us four. Oh, oh it's not what i thought it was going to be interesting so this is going to be p at the center one two three lone pair on top yeah there we go so uh that's a don and that's a that starts there we go so so it's actually trick all of them are pyramidal uh bond angles 107 cool same as ammonia cool so next which molecules contain three atoms in a straight line? Three atoms. Ooh. BF3. So BF3, of course, is trigonal planar. Methane, of course, is tetrahedral. Water is bent. Yeah, water is bent. And sulfur, sulfur hexafluoride. Oh, very strange. Three, which molecule contains three atoms in a straight line? Three atoms in a straight line. Oh, oh, fascinating. SF, oh, there we go. Three atoms. Ha, huh, I was looking for three bonds. Yeah, there you go. So SF6 has three atoms in a straight line. That's, huh, that took me a little bit of a little time now. I had to, to reread the question a few times. Cool. So... Three atoms, not three bonds in a straight line. Next, which compound has the greatest ionic character? Okay. So what we're looking here is small cation, large anion. Yeah, most ionic character. So hang on, we want the least covalent. So, oh, notice, sodium plus one is the same for all of them, so all the same cation. Yeah, there we go, all the same size. And then let's draw the anions on. The smallest is fluoride. It says fluoride is the smallest, least covalent character. Yeah, bromide, then chloride, which is slightly larger. Yeah, slightly larger. Bromide, which is massive. And then iodide is enormous iodides. That, that's going to be very, I, I, that's going to have lots of covalent character. So the least here is going to be sodium fluoride. The reason being, it has the smallest anion, therefore the least distortion. Because what we realize is, that the positive ion is going to see the cloud on, on the anions. I'm just going to put X minus. This has already got an extra electron, which means it's grown in size already. Yeah. And these electrons um, are being held by the nucleus. Yeah. These electrons are being held by the nucleus. Well, if you put a positive ion nearby, these electrons are going to get distorted. It's going to, it's going to do this. 
Yeah, they're going to find an attraction to this positive ion over here. Well, if I want to increase that distortion, two choices, shrink the cation. If I make it smaller, it becomes more like a black hole, much higher charge density. I could also just amp up its charge. If I did that, that's going to have a much greater attraction. The alternative is put on a, a really, really, really big anion that's going to allow easy distortion. Yeah, it means the, the further from the nucleus, less tightly held, more easily distorted. Great question, though. Uh, next, which bonds, rep which best represents the position of the bonding pair of electrons and the dipole in hydrogen chloride? Well, we know that a, that, that is correct and that is correct. That's not and that's not. The electrons are closer to the chlorine because it has a higher electronegativity. So what that means is, and then of course, it's that one. So the answer is A. The reason being is, if you've got electrons that are closer to the chlorine, then you're going to end up with a slight negative charge and a slight positive charge left on the H. I like it. Next. When a system is at equilibrium, it is always true that molecules of reactants stop changing to molecules of products. That's not true. No. The concentration of reactant bonds are equal. No, that's not true either. The concentration of reactant bonds are constant. That is true. The activation energy of the void reactions are uh, forward and reverse reactions are equal. Ooh. No. No, that's not true either. Um, but number C is. I like it. Students might question the last. The reason being is we know that when you've got uh, reversible reactions, yeah, well, most of the time they're going to have a similar, they're going to, so this, is the rea this reaction is exothermic, yeah? We know that that there, that the height of the hump, yeah, that's EA1, that's activity for the forward reaction. Well, the reverse reaction is, is that size. It's the height of the hump. It's got to get it back up again. Yeah, it's got to go back up to here. So the EA of, this, of the reverse is that one. So if anybody's interested, you know, in order to, for a reaction to be reversible, these have got to be relatively similar. It's nice to kind of talk about that. If, if it's massively exothermic, you know, if you've got an enormous exothermic reaction, then it'll only go in one direction. Yeah, you often find that reversible reactions have very small heat changes. Kind of nice, that. Next, an oxidizing agent or oil rig. This picture I have taught you, metals lose electrons, agents gain. Metals gain electrons, agents lose. So an oxy agent and a, and, an, and a reducing agent, yeah, and a red agent. So what's it saying? An oxidizing agent gains electrons and is oxidized. Oh, no, itself will be reduced. It'll oxidize somebody else. So it's gaining electrons and is therefore reduced in charge because ox electrons are negative, red ox. There we go. It's clever that. So C. Which trend is correct for the group two metals of atomic number? increases uh okay so the atomic radius decreases no as we go down the group as their numbers increase they get bigger as we add more electron shells yep the electronegativity increases no that's not true either the outermost electrons are getting further from the nucleus therefore they're further from the nucleus so it's the traction to pitch bonding pairs of electrons will be less the first ionization energy decreases that is correct the thermal stability of the nitrates decreases um, no, it actually increases down the group in the nitrates. So the answer is C. Next, consider the following reaction profile. Okay. So the activation energy for the forward reaction has a value of, oh, X minus Y. There we go. It's A. The reason why I know that is because if, if, if this is energy and we list this from 1 to 20, yeah, and I wanted to calculate this gap here. What I would say is, well, the total energy of X, let's put this as 18, yeah, is top down. Well, what I want to do is, in order to find this gap here, I need to minus that energy there. Yeah, so if that one's 18 and this one is, I don't know, 12, I don't know, 12, 10's going to be about there, slightly more than that, 13, yeah. So in order for me to find that gap, which is, we everyone knows is going to be 5, I'm going to do the total of X minus the total of Y, yeah. So X minus Y, like it, great question, fascinating. Never seen that before. Uh, next, a white solid gives a lilac flame potassium. Yeah, the solid reacts with water forming a strongly alkalized solution, potassium oxide. That's very clever, guys. Um, uh, that's actually really tricky. Um, the lilac flame is easy, but of course, they, they knew that was gonna be the case. 
yeah, B and D then appear. But what we need to realize is that the alkali metals, sodium metal, well, we know that when we add it to water, yeah, when we add it to water, it forms sodium hydroxide, which is strongly alkali and hydrogen gas. Well, I'll balance the reaction, can't not do it. There we are, in fact, I'm gonna say it's gonna do that, aren't we? Um, but the other thing to realize is, in fact, that sodium oxide, once you make that, which is a white solid, you add that to water, and of course it turns into sodium hydroxide. Yeah, and I can balance that, there we go. Uh, yeah, that adds up now. Um, the oxides, you learn at GCSE, the metal oxides are basic and the non-metal oxides are acidic. The chlorides aren't really anything. Cool, let's move on. The Which of the following is an isomer of 2,2-dimethyl pentan... Okay, mm, pentan-1-ol. So let's draw this out. There's pentan-1-ol. I need 2,2-dimethyl. There we go. I'm just going to miss the H's. Save me the time. Yeah, and then it goes, right. So I need an isomer. So seven carbons, C7H... Oh um a lot <laughs> one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen sixteen oh that's what i'm looking for isn't it so the top one one two three four five six so a is not nope next one i'm just counting the carbons by the way at the minute three because of that four five six Seven, that one could be. Yeah, that one could be. So maybe. Next one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope, not going to be that guy. Next one is two. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can't say it's B. There we go. That was interesting. I just had to count the carbons. I didn't know how long that was going to take. If that one had been a question mark as well, I would have drawn them both out and then just to check. Yeah, because maybe there would have been a double bond somewhere, maybe, don't know. Yeah, it's nice then. Which of the following hydroxides is the most soluble in water? Ooh, okay, that's quite clever. So barium hydroxide ion. Yeah, uh, and they're all, notice they're all the group twos. So A is the right answer. The bigger the difference, the more soluble. Yeah, you learn group two solubilities. This is what happens as we go down group two. Here's the hydroxide ion, little baby hydroxide ion. Yeah, so you realize that beryllium hydroxide is not soluble. Barium hydroxide, on the other hand, very hot soluble. Next, sulfates. The sulfate ion is mahusive. Yeah, so you go barium sulfate, no, not soluble at all. Beryllium sulfate, on the other hand, is very soluble. So nice, clever question, just checking your solubilities. Next, the... Uh, under suitable conditions, a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen react with, reacts to form water in a mixture of hydrocarbons. What is the general formula of the hydrocarbon produced? Interesting. Oh, God, it's all maths, isn't it? So hang on a minute. I've got to look at where the hydrogens are all coming from. Ugh. So first thing is that there's, the only place that's giving me carbons is, is here. So what that means is it is definitely going to be CN. And notice that's the same for all of them. They're going, everyone's going to figure that bit out. But the next question is, what is the hydrogen bit? So, okay. So let's actually build, let's input this as a one. Yeah. Let's input this as one. So if I put a one here, yeah, that's going to be C1. And then this is, becomes one, which is one times two is two plus one H, all right, so that's going to be three H2s, yeah, and that's going to be a one as well. So what that means is that 2N, that becomes a one. What do I have left? This is where I really ought to try and write out the equation. Plus three H2s goes to H2O and just add up the atoms really isn't it so i'm going to have a carbon of course how many hydrogens are left four yeah let's input another one let's input the number two two co's plus four plus one is five yeah goes to two h2o's 
and two carbons, CN, H, what have I got left? I've got four here and 10 here. So that's going to be a six. So I've added on two from the previous one. So plus two, because M was two and I've managed to, oh, hang on a minute. No, two N plus two. It's going to be D. Ah, is that correct? Don't know if it is. I'm temp. Mm. Fascinating. Uh, we can try it. So N, the N on the H is that six. If this N was two and it's now two N plus two, if I had N plus one here, N equals one, well, that's two N plus two again, so that is correct. So it's D. It's just maths, all maths games. Interesting question. Next, a protective layer of ozone O3 exists in the atmosphere. This protection mainly arises from ozone's ability to absorb ultraviolet radiation. Yeah. There we go. Nice and easy. Um, it doesn't reflect. We know that global warming and ozone has nothing to do. There's no such... We don't reflect anything. The only thing that reflects is something that's shiny. Yeah. This is molecules absorb because they're making and breaking bonds. Next, consider the following equation. So I've got oh, chlorate five ion. Um, what value of N is required to balance the above equation? How fascinating. So by the way, they're running my way. Do you notice that? Isn't that nice? Oh, I love my way. Metal, which is the chlorine. And the metal, the M actually stands for anybody who's not oxygen and hydrogen. So chlorine balances, yeah. Waters for oxygen, which is correct. Yeah. Acid for the H pluses, which is correct. Now we need to balance for charge. So on this side, I have got minus one. But on this side, ignoring the electrons, on this side, I have got minus one plus six. I have plus five. Agreed? So I need to get it down to minus one. To get from there to there, I need to add six electrons. And we're done. So answers C. Next, the conversion of butanoic acid into butanol is an example of reduction. I know, guys, by the way, that there is the great example of Edexcel and its infinite wisdom to ask A2 chemistry in AS. And by the way, they're allowed to ask this because you guys learned to turn an ol into technically, by the way, this is actually GCSE, but this question is technically you could do this at year 11. To turn an ol to an oic, yeah? To turn an alcohol into an oic is oxidation. Well, you guys all know that the opposite of oxidation is reduction. So if we reverse this, that must therefore be red. Yeah, very clever. Next. Okay. Oh, <laughs> compound X forms compound Y in a reaction shown in the above equation. No knowledge of the reaction is required. The mass of X required to produce... Oh, so we've got 8.4 grams of Y, and the yield is 40%. So they were expecting that to be much larger. Let's work out what the original was, folks. Whoa. What mass of X is required to produce at a yield of 40%? So the first step I'm going to do is 8 point, the 8.4 grams is 40%. Well, what I can do is just take 8.4, divide it by 40. That'll get me to 1%. Yeah, so 1% is 0.21 grams, times that by 100 to get it back up. I was meant to make 21, 21 grams in that output. It's a big difference, isn't it? 21 grams, okay? So if we were going to get 21 grams in this, 21 grams, and it then says the molar masses of all these are, and notice the ratio, so steps. So S1 is get to moles, yeah? Yeah. So we had to get back to the 21 grams. Step one, so grams over rams. Yeah, number of moles is grams over rams. Because we need the actual number, otherwise we can't get back to the original. You probably can actually, you can probably do the multiplying on later on. But I prefer doing it this way. Over, what does Y weigh? Well, they've told us the mass of Y. Yeah, so they've told us that Y, which is that one, has a mass of, that's just glucose. Oh, isn't that funny? Same as glucose, 180. Fascinating. Uh, 21 grams divided by 180. 
gives me uh, 0 0.117, 0 0.117 moles. What's the ratio? The ra step two is the ratio. So the ratio, of course, is a one to one. So I'm going to get 0 0.117 moles of X. And we've been given its MR, multiplied by its MR. I've kept that number on my calculator, by the way, 0 0.1166666666 times by 138, reorganized grams over arms, and I get 16.1 grams, so C. There we go, I like it. Next, which alcohol can be oxidized to form a ketone, secondary alcohol? Interesting, well, that's a primary. Nope, it's gonna form, a, it's gonna form an aldehyde. Secondary, yep, tertiary, won't do anything. Primary, nope, the answer's B, done. Next. An experiment requires 500 centimeters cubed of solution of nitrate ion concentration. This, this is prepared by dil diluting potassium nitrate solution with water. What volume of calcium nitrate solution will be needed? Ah, oh, isn't that fascinating? Got to be careful. It's, uh, it's got two nitrate ions. So this is a dilution. So C1V1 equals C2V2. Most, the most useful equation I can ever teach you at all of A level. I know it's just if you most students won't go on to do chemistry um, and but even if and if, when you do this is the one that you'll use more than other dilutions are they're so frequent it's just useful right so the experiment requires so I need a 500 volume at the end of it and a solution containing nitrate ion concentration so my final concentration needs to be that right so it is prepared by diluting so I've got an original thing of calcium nitrate. Now, this is the tricky bit. Yeah, because if that's the original concentration of a calcium nitrate solution, the nitrate ions is going to be twice that. Yeah, because remember, if we've got a solution that contains calcium nitrate, when this goes into solution, it fragments, it, it, it dissolves. I'm going to form Ca2+, plus, and I'm going to form two nitrate ions. So the concentration of this is going to give me a double the concentration of nitrate ions. So that's what I first of all need to do, is I need to double that, which gives me 0 0.5 times by question mark, gives me these times, right, so I can reorganize. So that times by that over 0 0.5, and I'll get my answer. 0 0.5, no, uh, uh, 0 0.1 multiplied by 500, yeah, divided by 0 0.5. So I need 100. It's kind of, is that right? Let's just check that. Yeah, I need, it says, says that I need 100 of the original solution. The original volume is 100. Yeah. So that's 100. So I'm going to mark that, and then it's attempting to proof it. So if I have C1 of 0 0.5 times by 100, yeah, equals 0 0.5 times 100. It's going to give me 50, 50 over there. And that's moles. Yeah, well, if I now do C1, C2, which is 0 0.1 multiplied by 500 all over 1,000, I should get exactly the same answer, 0 0.1 multiplied by 500 divided by 1,000. And I get, oh, I get 0 0.1 times 500 oh, divided by 1,000. I get an even smaller answer. I forgot I stuffed up something there. Oh, I didn't divide by a thousand, did I? Lol. Over a thousand on that one gives me the same answer. It gives me 50. Right, get rid of the thousand. Just ignore it. Those two numbers should be the same. 0 0.5 times 100, 50. 0 0.1 times 500. Yeah, it gives me exactly the same answer. So it is correct. 100. I don't like it. Next, a mass of 1.6 of anhydrous metal sulfate was dissolved in water. Addition of excess barium chloride solution resulted in a precipitate of 3.33 grams of barium sulfate. The original substance could be. How fascinating. Dead clever. Right, so number of moles. <laughs> moles equals grams over rams. Yeah, I've got grams, 2.33, over barium sulfate. If you're wondering why, it's because I have X sulfate, yeah, reacting with barium chloride, yeah, to form barium sulfate. And I'm going to say XCL, yeah? The only thing I know about is him. So grams over rams over 233. Three. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it gives me 0 0.1. 2.33 3 divided by 233 3 gives me 0 0.01. 
Yep, that's correct. So that gives me 0 0.01 moles. And then the next thing is, what's the ratio? I can work out, therefore, <clears throat> we know that the barium ions, yeah, that's quite fascinating, really, isn't it? Um, that is that is the number of moles of sulfate ions. Well, assuming that there's only one sulfate in the compound, which all of these are, yeah. So we've got XSO4, and we know that the number of moles there is equal to that. So I've now got XSO4, which is 0 0.01 moles, and I've been given a grams of it. I can work out rams. Number of moles equals grams over rams. Reorganize, bring that over, bring that down. Rams equals grams over moles. So I've got grams, uh, 1.6 divided by moles of 0 0.01, and I get 160. So my MR is 160. Right, now what I can do, now that I've got uh, XSO4 equals 160, I can have m minus 32 for sulfur, minus 16 times 4 gives me 64, which I seem to recall is copper. Can't get anybody else from that one, so the answer's copper. That's hard, that. It's very clever. Yeah, I'm going to minus off these atoms from there. That's what I did. Gives us 64, which is calcium, of course, is 40. Copper is 63.5, in this case, 64. Magnesium is 23, but magnesium sulfate would be Mg. I need two of them for that. Yeah? So that can't be right. Oh, hang on a minute. 64. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Wow. Guys, it's not copper because it's a whole number. The answer is D. The reason being is sodium is element number 11 and 23. Well, calcium sulfate, yeah, copper 2 sulfate, that would actually have a fraction on it. Yeah, that'd be a fraction. Magnesium sulfate, it would be just MgSO4. And sodium sulfate would be two of them, Na2SO4. Well, sodium waste, which means, oh, hang on, that'd be 46. Oh, that's what I tell a lie. It's B. It's B, it's B, it's B. It's fine. Okay, fine. The answer's B. I would want that to be checked, though. Someone check me on 19, please. First one I've questioned. First one. The concentration of the solution of iodine can be determined by titration with sodium thiosulfate. The, sodi the sulfur-containing product of this reaction, ooh, thiosulfate, S2O3. Double it. Binds together. I'm done. Sorry, folks. That's just horrible, isn't it? I I'm really sorry for that. That's not. There's not much I can do about it. You just have to know what thiosulfate is. That's the thiosulfate ion, S2O3, 2 minus. And they double when they when they react, they combine together. Yeah, and so the numbers just double. Two of them. Yeah, I so said it's B. I, I want somebody, can someone, I know that you guys, uh, I don't know, I've still got 10 people watching. I don't know if you guys are still watching. No one's answered me on my chat on my question 19. I do want to check that mark scheme on that one. Um, very clever. The copper sulfate one's the one that I'm interested in. No one's replied to me, which is very upsetting. Paper two, um, unit two mark scheme. Let's have a look. I'll split my screen as well. This is not going well. There you go, I'll die over there. And then put that one there. There we go. Uh, I don't know why this is sideways. How bizarre. Uh, data sheet. That's not what I want. It's definitely not what I want. I want that one over there. And that to be extended. Um, I kind of feel like I want to check the rest of them as well now since I'm here. B. 19 is D. I don't know if I got it right now. I'm all, I'm all befuddled. The answer is D. C, yeah, and then A, and then C, and then C, and then C. Doing well so far. Number eight is A. Number nine is B. Number 10 is B. Number 11 is A. Number 12 is D. Yay. Number 13 is A. Number 14 is C. Number 15 is D. Number 16 is C. Smashing it. Number 17 is B. Number 18 is B. 
Number 19 is B. Although, although not very nice that. Yeah, and the last one is B. Winner. 19, 19 and 20 both B. Fab. So nice to just go through those multiple choices. You'll just wait. Never mind. It's B. <laughs> Lol. Um, nice to go through those guys and to see them. Yeah. We know that these are, I mean, multiple choice are always tricky. It takes a bit of practice. The more you do, the better you get. Okay. Okay. In this question, chemistry is about group seven. Silver nitrate is added to a solution of aqueous containing two different halide ions. Oh. The, a mixture of two different precipitates, A and B, is formed. When concentrated ammonia is added, precipitate A remains and precipitate B dissolves. Identify the halide ion A. The formula, the halide ion, name or formula. So the one, so we know there are three, there are four halide ions, but only three we can test for. Yeah, these we can't test for fluoride because they're all soluble. Comes up a lot that this one forms a white PPT in the presence of silver nitrate. Yeah, and then it vanishes with dill, vanish with dilute ammonia. Yeah, there we go. This one forms a cream PPT with silver nitrate, and it vanishes with conch, yeah, with conch ammonia. And then iodine forms a yellow PPT, which never vanishes. So they've used concentrated, yeah, I'm gonna zoom in now. Concentrated ammonia, A did not vanish, so that's gonna be I, the halide ion is iodide. Identify by name or formula one possible halide ion in B. So B could be either CL or BR. Yeah, I don't know, one possible. Let's go for BR, could be either. Yeah, or formula, one possible halide ion in B. Write an ionic equation, including for the formation of the precipitate of A. Oh, hit a button. Silver gives us AG plus one, which reacts with I minus, uh, including state symbols, of course, which gives me AGI. This is, of course, aqueous, aqueous, and then solid, and that's yellow. There we go. Nice name. I got that question wrong. Oh, don't worry. Concentrated sulfuric acid is added to solid potassium chloride. A reaction occurs in which steamy misty fumes give the general formula of the misty fumes, HCl. Next, write an equation for this reaction. So this is KCl plus H2SO4. Now we remember that the F Going back to these people up here, we know that these two do displacements, yeah, with conch sulfuric. Yeah, they don't do redox. These guys here do redox, but that's, these guys just do straight displacement, which makes everything so much easier in this case. Yeah, because I'm just going to switch here. I'm going to form KHSO4 plus HCl. State symbols are not required. How nice. Next. When concentrated acid to potassium bromide, there you go, a redox reaction occurs. A mixture of products is formed, including sulfur dioxide as the only reduction product. Give the oxidation number of sulfur in, sulfuric acid. So I've just done this with my GCSE year 11 class, by the way, just on oxidation numbers with them. So we've got minus eight from oxygen, plus two from hydrogen. So we're gonna have plus six, there we go, plus six. And you have to have that plus, no plus, no mark. Sulfur dioxide, SO2, minus four, therefore plus four. There we go, final answers. Next, complete the ionic equation for the redox reaction. Ah, oh, they're asking me to, to balance. So we know that the sulfur sulfuric acid, yeah, is going to form SO2. We're also going to know that the Br is going to form bromine. And then we just need to balance it. Yeah, so we've got, let's do sulfur first, one and one, fine. Bromine's two and two. I'm trying to draw my line there to help me balance it. I just need to balance it for oxygens now. So I've got four oxygens here, and I've got only a two, three. So if I do that, there we go. You do that, yeah, now I've got four H's, and I'm done. There we go. And that all adds up, I think. Six H's. Oh, no, easily done. Always, always check. Six H's, sorry, four H's, four H's, one sulfur. 
one sulfur. Four oxygens, four oxygens, two BRs, two BRs. All good. Nice. Clever question. Next. When concentrated sulfuric acid is added to potassium iodide, a redox reaction to occur, producing two reduction products other than sulfur dioxide. Identify the two in each case given observation. So after SO2, after SO2 comes sulfur. Yeah, <clears throat> so sulfur is the next product. And the sulfur will be a yellow observation, yellow solid. Yeah. The next, the second observation is going to be H2S. Now, do they want the name? Identify, you can give either name or formula. So H2S, yeah, and the observation is a bad egg smell. Bad egg smell. Like it. Toxic gas, very nasty. Next, hydromagnesite. Ooh, is a mineral containing magnesium carbonate. A student crushed some mag hydromagnesite and added uh, the sample of mass yada yada to excess hydrochloric acid. Give a reason why the mineral was crushed before to maximize surface area, increase, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna put increase, increase surface area, surface area to increase rate, increase rate of reaction. I like it. I'm putting both, don't know which one the mark's gonna be for. Write an equation for the reaction between magnesium carbonate, MgCO3, plus HCl, including state symbols. This is testing to see whether or not you guys can do a formula of MgCl, by the way. Everyone knows that. CO2 and water. Balance the equation. I'm going to need two of those, and I think that probably adds up. It does, amazingly. Yeah, done. Oh, state includes state symbols. Solid, of course, all carbonates. It's ionic. That's aqueous, all acids are aqueous. That's going to be aqueous, that's going to be a gas, and that's going to be water with that. Next, the gas formed in the reaction was collected in the gas syringe. Describe the changes in the rate of reaction during the experiment. Uh, three marks. I did this, anyone who had me at GCSE, year 11, will, uh, sorry, anyone who had me at GCSE will remember this graph and the three marks and the process. Yeah, explain these changes in terms of collision. So at the beginning of them, at the beginning, I'll do the three sections. At the beginning of the reaction is the fastest part of the reaction. Then it starts to curve off. This is the linear portion, by the way. Yeah, so there's a linear portion of the graph. That'd be really good if I could use a ruler. There we go, I can use a ruler. How amazing is this? There we go, let's use a ruler. Love that, check me out. There we go. So up to there, so this part here is the fastest part of the graph. Yeah, and then it starts to slow down. So if I then change my color, it then slows down. On this, I'm gonna make my pen a bit thicker, let's do it in red. Yeah, so this one, oh no. Let's try all that again. Do that in red. So this section here is it's slowing down, and then it gets to that bit there. So this bit here is slowing, yeah and then this bit here has stopped. So these are the three sections, let's get rid of the ruler. So describe the changes in the rate during the experiment. I'll say changes, so bullet point number one, yeah, um, from zero minutes to 30 seconds, give or take, to 30 seconds reaction has highest rate. I don't know, I don't think I actually need this. Highest rate. After 30 seconds, to 30 seconds, rate, rate slows down, slows down due to reactants, reactants being used up, being used up used up so concentration decreases concentration decreases so fewer particles fewer particles per unit volume unit volume fewer collisions fewer collisions 
Is that all the space I get? At at three minutes and oh, it's weird, isn't it? At three and a half minutes. At three point five minutes, reaction stops. Reagent all used up. I can't fit it on. Isn't that funny? I don't think I need that first bit. Nightmare. Reagent. If I write off that line, it won't get marked, by the way. That's a great point to make, by the way. This bit would not be marked. Yeah. Reaction stops. Reagents all used up. Used up. Concentration equals zero. No particles to collide. I want to see the mark scheme for that. It'd be fascinating. Three marks. Hmm. Use the information of the graph to calculate the volume of a uh, number of moles of magnesium carbonate that reacted with the hydrochloric acid. Okay. Well, look, look it's rather, rather a nice graph in it. 200 was the volume. Yeah. Volume of CO2 made is 200 centimeters cubed exactly. You guys will not get this anymore. You guys will get PV equals NRT. Yeah, we remember this. We know this. Yeah. You got all the marks. Yay, thanks, Dad. Oh, Dad, you're so good at this. Well done. Thank you. PV equals NRT. Now, you guys are using number of moles is V over 24, and I despise that Excel for using that at A-level. It's disgusting. Yuck. For part C. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. <coughs> so we're going to have number of moles equals 200 over 24,000 because I'm in centimeters cubed and all that jazz. It's rubbish. PV equals NRT is the more, is the more important. Yeah, over 24,000 gives me a number of moles of 8.33 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of CO2, moles of carbon dioxide. What's the ratio? This isn't complicated, is it? The ratio from there to there is 1 to 1. Yeah. Calculate the number of moles of magnesium carbon in the reactant, so it's the same number. Moles of CO2. Ratio 1 to 1. 8.33 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of MgCO3. Done. Calculate the mass of magnesium carbonate that reacted and hence the percentage mass in the, oh, nice, I like that. Yeah. Um, right, number of moles equals grams over rams, I need mass. Asking me to rearrange times the rams. Yeah, rams times moles gives me grams. So the rams of magnesium carbonate, gotta work out the rams of that, 24 point, I gotta be careful here, periodic table, always check it at A level because there's always like these tricky bits here. There's the A-level one. There it is. Magnesium, 24.3. Yeah. So 24.3 plus 12.0 plus 16 times 3. So magnesium carbonate is going to be 24.3 plus 12 plus 16 times 3 gives me 84.3 multiplied by 8.33 times 10 to the minus 3. Multiplied by 8.33 exponential minus 3 gives me 0 0.702 grams. Wait, how much How much did they actually have? Oh, there it is. 0 0.936. So percentage. Calculate the percentage by mass. I've forgotten what it was. 0 0.936. Seems to recall. Percentage by mass of it, 0 0.702, divided by that times 100. Yeah, divide that number by 0 0.936. Ah, made a mistake. 0 0.72, I've just lost that on my calculator. Nightmare, 0 0.936 times 100. It's roughly 75%. Oh, hang on a minute. Massive. Hmm? Oh, it's in two sections. Fine. Okay. Uh, massive magnesium cut, 0 0.702. Percentage, 0 0.702 over 0 0.936 times 100. It's going to give me the percentage by mass, 75. Glad to see the mark scheme for that, actually. Just because I've, I've lost a round number, haven't I? That was all my fault, that. I lost a, the number disappeared off my calculator because I closed it by accident. It was like, ah, nightmare. Uh, I'm also realizing that you guys have got another lesson in five minutes. So I think I will. Do you know what? Uh, I need to check. I need to check. No, check, 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 check. Um, Reading, yada, 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 it's all good. 75%, there we go. Allow, huh. correct answer with or without working scores one. There we go. Ignore significant figure except for one significant figure. Yeah, 80 grams, lol. Uh, 
So look at that. Use crazy long numbers. Eight is I eight four grams small. Okay, whatever. Fine, we're done. Cool. So I will leave it there today, I think. Am I at the end of the, that question? Almost. I'll finish this off. One last question. Explain the effect, right? So the carbon dioxide is being collected under water. Not the best way to do it. You'd use a gas syringe always. Explain the effect of collecting the carbon dioxide over water would have on the volume of gas collected and hence the percentage of magnesium carbonate. So you would have less the effect on the volume. Uh, volume of CO2 would appear, would be, the volume of CO2 would be lower, lower than expected, than expected due to, due to CO2 being soluble. We know this, being soluble. Right, what's that going to, assume the gas syringe and measuring similar can be read with the same accuracy. So what's this going to do to the percentage yield? Well, what that means is, it means that I will have a smaller number of moles of CO2. If I've got a smaller number of that, then when I multiply that by the M, it's going to give me a smaller mass, which means I'm going to get a lower percentage. Yeah, smaller mass, smaller mass of CO2 or vol of CO2. Uh, will will make percentage, uh, what do they call it? Percentage mass appear lower. Mass appear less, less than 75%. Uh, I like it. Mark scheme. CO2, slightly soluble absorbs, it remains in water. CO2, so mass is reduced. So percentage by mass is lower. Fine. Guys, three minutes left of the lesson. Blimey. Back to you guys. Wait, I'll pause it today, guys. We're, I feel like we've smashed through that paper too in, in an hour. I feel like we've done really, really well. Uh, we're up to question 23. Uh, I'll finish this off next lesson. If I do it with the other class, it just means that you guys can watch it back and mark it and then fill in your data for me. That would be amazing, folks. Um, Guys, have a great rest of your day, and I will see you all soon. Take care.